If this is your first time watching the Michigan Football Report, here's a little bit about what we do on this show. We've got daily videos, original videos, on Michigan football, which consists of the latest rumors around the program and news items you might want to know more about throughout the day. And then, of course, live chat and taking your questions, live Q&As, all throughout the 2020 offseason. We've got a great show coming up for you right now on the Michigan Football Report. Let's go. Michigan's linebackers coach Anthony Campanile, Campanelli, if you're uh, if you're from the old country, expected to stay with the program. If you haven't been following this story over the past week plus, it's been rumored heavily that he was a candidate and maybe the top candidate for both the Boston College, where he spent the last few years before coming to Michigan, and the Rutgers DC job. Boston College moved on from him last week, and now it seems that he is going to stay at Michigan, given this four Harbaugh head heads that he's going to turn down the Rutgers defensive coordinator position under new head coach Greg Schiano. Might have been a co-offensive coordinator position the way things were uh, sh you know, shaking out, but the rumor out there is that he was expected to receive a $1 million offer per year to be their DC, significantly higher than the $415,000 he made at Michigan in 2019. His first season with the Wolverines was one of the leaders of that East Coast recruiting uh, bonanza that you saw in the 2020 recruiting class uh, out of Ma Massachusetts, out of, of course, New Jersey with Michigan's 2020 class. So if he stays, that means Michigan still has one spot open on the uh, on the defensive coaching staff. And we'll take a look at that here in a second. But want to just glance briefly, we've got it coming up right now, glance briefly at the defensive coaching staff going into this 2020 offseason. We know that Michigan's lost one coach already, Ole Miss, Chris Partridge, to become the new defensive coordinator, co-DC. We'll see how that shakes out. But Don Brown, four seasons with the Wolverines, heading into his fifth. Sean Nua and Campanelli, first season with the Wolverines. Both of them seen as probably more rec better recruiters than they are on the field coaching guys. On the field coaching guys, Don Brown, Mike Sordich, who's been with Harbaugh since day one with his uh, tenure at the Wolverines. So a little bit of uh, old, a little bit of new Brown, Zordich been with the program for a while, Sean Nua, and of coach, of course, Coach Camp, the other two defensive coaches left with Chris, Chris Partridge, who'd been with Michigan for five years, uh, a couple in three, I believe, in a coaching role and a couple in a support role after he was a, you know, fairly legendary but very young high school coach in New Jersey, Coach Jabril Peppers, Rajon Gary, then came over to the Michigan coaching staff. So this is a defense that, as you've heard me say, guys, Beats up on the little guys, beats up on the uh, on, on the kids, but then when the uh, when the big boys come to town, they kind of curl up like a bully and, and get run over. We've seen it with Wisconsin. We've seen it with kind of Alabama in the second half, and of course the last two years against Ohio State. Finished the number 11 defense in the country, number 25 defense in scoring. So certainly Don Brown puts up the stats, but is he the guy you want as the defensive coordinator going forward for this Wolverines team? You might get hit with an ad break here on YouTube. So why you do, go down in the comments, we'll pin it for you. Do you want Don Brown as your defensive coordinator in 2020? Type DB for yes, FB for no. Thanks for answering that question. Scrolling down, DB or FB. Also wanna ask you guys before we get into our next story on Michigan football recruiting, if you follow me on Twitter, 10 or 12 of you followed me after I asked last week, and that's fine. Appreciate it to those guys. Thanks a lot to the few of you that uh, messaged me and said watch the video and followed you. But I got to get to 5,000 ASAP. We're still about 200 away, so I made my account private. So no more snooping and sneaking around and uh, lurking on my, my tweets, you guys. Go ahead and follow at James Yoder. I promise you will not regret it. Need about 200 more to get to our goal. Let's take a look at our next story. Probably our biggest story as far as depth and information, something I want to focus on, is Michigan football recruiting no longer elite. I'm going to give it three Harbaugh heads because they haven't had a top five class in the past three years after that 2017 class that's kind of turned out to be a lot of smoke and mirrors, uh, more attrition to that class than any I can remember in the history of Michigan football. But they're not just coming under fire from folks like me and maybe fans for the classes they're putting out, whether or not there's a talent gap with Ohio State, whether or not they're going to keep up with Penn State going forward as Jim Harbaugh and, and James Franklin have cemented themselves as uh, the long-term coaches of their respective programs. 24-7 Sports, one of the leaders in the uh, the national recruiting scene, 
Their director of recruiting had a pretty damning quote when it comes to Michigan's recruiting recently on a podcast. He says, I just don't think collectively this staff is recruiting at a level to win a national championship across the board. It's a blow losing a guy like Partridge, Chris Partridge, former linebackers coach and of course, uh, secondary coach, safeties and um, special teams, who I feel like is one of your best recruiters when the emphasis on recruiting at Michigan isn't the same as it is at Ohio State and Penn State right now. And we're starting to see it on the field. Some other things that he mentioned in that podcast that I found were interesting. That he says, Michigan puts too much emphasis on the consistent day-to-day follow-up and communication with coaches and recruits to the assistant coach that covers that area. Harbaugh has very few meetings as a group with the recruiting strategy. And in a lot of ways, it goes down to, comes down to, he alluded to it, but then it was talked about by many others, including this one, Matt Dudak, who has been with Michigan for almost three years now. Their defense, their director of recruiting came over from Arizona under Rich Rod, if that tells you anything. But there's a guy named EJ Holland. I'm not familiar with him. Apparently, he's the new recruiting guru at Rivals.com covering Michigan. Someone sent me this screenshot on Twitter a couple days ago, and I thought it was pretty interesting. So I looked up Holland, apparently just took over the role for Michigan after covering Notre Dame and, and some others for, uh, for Rivals. He says, I'm not sure if he's, according to Dudak, regarding Dudak, I'm not sure if he's a trailblazer or not, but I've been around two other major programs in Texas and Notre Dame. Both people in his role at those schools did a better job, in my opinion. I also talked to people in his position around the country, yada, yada, yada. I talk to recruits, I talk to families, I talk to coaches, I never hear his name brought up. And you guys have heard it from me before, especially if you follow me on Twitter, at James Joder, you've probably seen me talk about it on this show. I think the guy's kind of, uh, I don't want to say the word clown because that's not fair to him, um, but he's not a mature guy. He acts like a 15-year-old on the internet, he talks trash to fans, and You read too many times where a recruit or a coach goes out and says, oh, my guy likes Michigan, or I like Michigan, but we haven't heard from Michigan in several weeks or several months, or we've emailed them, called them. They don't return our calls. That's what Matt Dudek's job is, is to communicate with every possible recruit, help Jim Harbaugh bring in a top class. We'll show you the recruiting rankings here in just a moment. But before we do, I want to make sure you guys see one of our deals of the day from our merch partner. Going to give you guys deals all off season, so you don't go somewhere else and pay full price. This Michigan Jordan brand zip up is twenty dollars off right now. I think it ends today, so don't wait. Only fifty nine ninety nine Michigan quarter Jordan brand quarter zip. Chatsports.com slash blue five. I'm going to put it for you down in the comment section. Also going to put it towards the top of the description of the YouTube video. So chatsports.com slash blue five. If you want to get this awesome Jordan brand Michigan quarter zip jacket, only $59.99. Here's where Michigan's recruiting rankings are at over the past five seasons. Number 11 class right now. That could change by a spot or two as we go into the final recruiting rankings. Number two in the Big Ten. Number eight national. Big time year last year coming off of, uh, you know, 10 straight wins after Notre Dame before Ohio State in 28-19. Had a lot of momentum. But 2018 was Dudek's first year on the job. You know, a full year and a half after he really took the position in, in summer of 2017. Dropped all the way down to 22 nationally. And prior to that, number five and number eight. So at best, he got them last year off of a great season to where they were Harbaugh's, you know, or the worst of Harbaugh's two first two recruiting classes. So don't want to take too many shots at Dudak, but director of 24-7 director of recruiting, Steve Wilfong, says Michigan's not really organized around the recruiting, not pursuing. Some other notes from that podcast say, hey, Michigan just doesn't get after it. They don't visit as many schools, et cetera, don't call as many coaches. And then you get EJ Holland from Rivals who says, He's not doing the job. There's guys in his position all over the country, different schools, Texas, Notre Dame, et cetera, that are doing it at a much better job. I think Matt Dudek heard a lot of weird things about him from people that I don't necessarily know if have insight. But let's just say I think Michigan needs to recruit a lot better, and I think they could do a lot better at that position if they want to compete with Ohio State long-term going forward. Is Matt Dudek the guy? I'm not sure. We'll see how this 2018, 19, and 20 classes shake out as we get into the next few years. All right. You see the clock there. You see the countdown clock, guys. We're 319 days, less than 319 days under the time until Michigan plays Ohio State. You guys know I'm committed to beating Ohio State again this year. Michigan's not put enough emphasis on this game. I don't believe because I haven't heard anything about Jim Harbaugh having a countdown clock in his office yet. So whatever. But this guy here, whose name I'm going to have to look up really quick, 
Chukwumuka Anye Jekue. Hope I didn't pronounce that incorrectly. But now a musician, goes by Mecca Don. If you follow any Ohio State fans on Twitter, you might see his name pop up in your Twitter timeline every once in a while. But look at this tweet. Look at this scumbag. Look at this freaking guy, because he probably does it. When I see a Michigan fan in Columbus, Ohio, I want to key their car. I'm assuming he means like a Michigan license plate. But this guy's got a verified blue check mark on, on Twitter. I don't know how, because his music is kind of, you know, below average. Let me just tell you, I could say a lot of bad things about his music, but I won't. But there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of evidence there that you can go listen to. But that just pisses me off. So I'm going to go find some cars with Ohio plates on them, key those just to, to spite him, probably. But I just want to make sure you guys know we're not forgetting about this stuff, you Ohio State fans who are just flooding the show with views. Stop watching, but beat Ohio State again. We're focusing on them every show this entire year. The countdown clock's there under 319 days, 18 hours, 15 minutes, 20 seconds, 19 seconds, 18 seconds. Type beat Ohio State in the comments. I want to make sure we're getting 50, 100, 200 comments every show. Getting people tweeting at me, hashtag Bosa. I know what's up. You guys know Bosa. It's not the guys who are... Uh, who are, who are uh, you know, putting terrible things on their Twitter account about, uh, about all, you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, Bosa is beat Ohio State again. Just remember that. And remember this, the shirt I'm wearing, you see this? I was going to go Trump on that one, man. I'm not going to do that. You see this shirt? You see this bad boy? On sale right now. This thing is literally, if I could turn this into a pillow, if I could turn this into an entire outfit, I'd wear it every single day because it's the most comfortable shirt of all time. Huge sale on it right now, 25% off. Chatsports.com slash blue6. The other one, the quarter zip, blue five. This is chatsports.com slash blue six. This is the 2018 official coach's shirt. I love this thing. It's amazing. I just want to keep rubbing myself. That's what she said. Um, that's what he said, I guess, right? We'll see what happens there. Chatsports.com slash blue six. Next rumor, our last rumor here on the show, Ben McDaniels to the Patriots? Yeah, I don't know. We're giving it two Harbaugh heads. I can tell you for a fact that he is now a candidate for the Patriots job. But Bill Belichick isn't the kind of guy that just hires coaches because they've got the same last name as a guy that he trusts a lot. So Ben McDaniels, uh, I think he's just shy of 40, 38, 39 years old, two seasons at Michigan, one on staff, one as a support staff, has been a quarterback's coach in the NFL in the past with the uh, the Broncos when his brother was the coach there when they had Tim Tebow seven, eight, nine years ago. And... Would have taken the job as the Browns quarterback coach had his brother Josh taken the head coaching job for the Browns. That turned out to be a mess. I think Josh made the right decision by walking away from that absolute dumpster fire. But now that he's staying and that the wide receivers coach with the Patriots took the Giants head coaching job, there's an opening on the staff. And I've been told that Ben and Josh have interest in working together. Josh certainly wants to get his brother back in the NFL under his uh, under his you know, wing to see if they can progress his career. And he is introducing him as a candidate to Bill Belichick. Whether he gets the job, I couldn't say. But don't be surprised if Michigan is looking for a new QB coach if Ben McDaniels were to get a job with the New England Patriots. Ben McDaniels coached the quarterbacks. I want to ask you guys, though, who do you think will be the quarterback that's starting for Michigan when they head in the road September 5th, I think it is, 2020, near Seattle, Washington, to take on the Huskies? Joe McCaffrey, Joe Milton. I think Joe Milton is the most popular Michigan player in history, never to you know surpass the 20 snap mark in his entire career. But a lot of Joe Milton love out there on the internet. I'm sticking with McCaffrey. Don't at me. Don't don't talk any trash to me. JM or DM. Type it below in the comments. Really want to know what you guys think about this uh, 20 uh, 2020 recruiting matchup. Let's take a look at the or quarterback matchup. Let's take a look at the Michigan football offense from this past year that Ben McDaniels is a part of. Ended up to be number 68 in the country. Pretty rudimentary. A big increase in passing, but still only got him to number 50 in the country, even though they added about 45, 50 yards per game in passing. Big drop down in rushing is maybe to be expected because the offense as a total, you see up there 401.5, was actually down from last year. But how about the quarterbacks that Ben McDaniel was in charge of coaching? At least the quarterback, Shea Patterson, that started every game both seasons. More passing yards. An extra nearly 500 passing yards and one more touchdown, 23 to 22. About the same interceptions, and Shea was a little more dangerous on the ground in 2019. I think the uh, offense from Josh uh, Gaddis opened up things on the ground for Shea Patterson. But if Ben McDaniels heads to the NFL, I think you're going to see all kinds of opportunities from Michigan to bring in some old blood guys Jim Harbaugh has worked with in the past, 
or some of these new uh, quarterback gurus around the country that are just looking for a shot at a place like Michigan with two potential, uh, new, you know, two potential quarterbacks going for that starting battle. Thanks so much for watching today. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. I've made it private, so no more freebies. Followers only. Hit the subscribe button, guys. Just hit it. Make sure you are subscribed to Michigan Football Report. Never miss an episode like this one here or this one here. Watch them. Keep watching. Go Blue.